This video is going to show you how to set up a simple model in GMS that describes the transport of a plume. And so the model will be shown in this domain here. We'll just start with a very simple geometric domain that's half a kilometer on a side. I set up the conceptual model already. So let's take a look at it. And to start off with, I'm going to right click here. And this is the window that you'll see when you've first set up the conceptual model. And so what you need to do when you set this model up is click transport and select MT3DMS and also define a species when you set the conceptual model up. If you don't do this and you need to go back and do it later, you can select properties and check off the appropriate boxes here. If I click this to find species. I have a compound here called species one that I'll uh, analyze the transport. So when I set up this conceptual model, I lump all the properties into one coverage. So this has the recharge rate, the concentration, the hydraulic connectivity, storage, specific yield, um, porosity, all, the, all of these things. And I covered the whole grid. So when we go to take a look at the attribute table and we go to polygons here, we have all of these things that we're setting up. So the recharge rate, 5 times 10 to the minus 9. And in the recharge, the concentration of species 1 will be 0. I'm using these values for the hydraulic connectivity. What I'm thinking of is that this is going to be roughly uh, similar to the Piedmont. So those hydraulic connectivity values are appropriate. And specific storage and specific yield, these are the values that I'm using. And I'll use a steady state model at first for this analysis. And so these values aren't really needed at this point. But if we switch to a transient hydraulic model, then they will be needed. The porosity is 0.05. The longitudinal dispersivity is given here as 10 meters. And the starting concentration uh, as the default will be 0. So all of those values are uh, set in the model in one coverage. This coverage here specifies the boundary condition, uh, the stream over here on the right hand side. This is a similar kind of boundary condition as what we've used in the past. And the attributes of this boundary will be that the head here is equal to 50 meters. I guess as I've done before, I've set the units to meters and seconds for this model. And well, OK, so here, let's go and take a look at this. The grid is not set up yet, but we'll go ahead and map it. And I'll make it 100 by 100. And let's see, we'll have it be 500 cells by 100 cells. And it's a 500 by 500 uh, in x and y. And the thickness will be 50 meters. And let's just make. There are five, uh, five layers in the grid. OK, so that's what we end up with. Let's go ahead and display that grid just to make sure that we've got it set up right. OK, now the reason I went with 500 by 500 is because I have in mind that this will be representing the Piedmont and the streams in the Piedmont, the spacing between the streams is roughly one kilometer. So I'm assuming that this is the divide between the streams. And that's how I get this dimension of 500 meters. OK, so the first thing to do is to run the problem and determine what the flows are. And that'll be done using a mod flow model. And it's essentially going to be the same thing that we've done several times. So we start off with a initial, oh, should have been that one, a starting head of 50 equal to the top of the grid. And I can just go ahead and run this. So here are the hydraulic heads. There are the heads. 
So we have a head of 50 here and a head of 66. So we get a head change of 16 meters over 500 meters. That's actually a fairly steep average horizontal hydraulic head gradient, but that'll be fine for our problem. Okay, so this is a steady state model, and now we want to go and assume that there's a contaminant here that is introduced and forms a plume that evolves with time. We'll assume that the heads are steady so that this flow field is what is used for the, the entire migration of the contaminants. So we need a contaminant source, and I turn this on here in my conceptual model and you can see the outline. I'm going to turn the grid back off here so we can see a little bit easier. So there's the uh, outline of the contaminant source and if I take a look at the coverage what I've done here for the contaminant source I put it in the first layer and I'm specifying the concentration in this layer in this particular zone within the layer as well as the starting concentration. So my contaminant source will be an area where for whatever reason the, the, there are some materials that are leaching out some contaminants and for whatever reason the, contaminant, or the concentration of the water is held at a constant value. Uh, and I've selected this region for the, uh, the, the source area. Okay, now I also put in a couple of monitoring wells, and they're over here. Here are the three monitoring wells, and we take a look at those. They're similar to what we had for monitoring wells in the past, where I'm uh, over here, I've selected the species uh, one for the observation points. And I selected here 3D grid layer for option for observation points is by layer number, and I'm putting them in the second layer. And then the attribute table. I've made them all observation points, so that's important to do. Put them in layer two. And I selected the observed species for all of these to be zero just assuming that we're, we don't know what it is, so we don't have a, a concentration to match. And I also set the names here. Um, this will show up then uh, as the designator when we take a look at plots of the, the results. Okay, so now we're ready to analyze the uh, transport. And in order to do this, we need to be able to set up an MT3D model. So what I did early on was to go to model interfaces and check this box here for MT3D MS. And so if you don't see MT3D up there, that's what you should do. If you do see it here, then you're in good shape and you can go and set a new simulation and we get this as the starting window. So we'll set up the stress periods first and the stress period that we'll have will be 5 e to the eighth seconds. That's about 15 years and we can we'll have just one time step that it really doesn't matter here what we'll do is set the um, transient time step and we can just use 1 e to the 8th and a time step multiplier of 1.2. The time steps will be set as a default, but we need to make this um, large enough so that the default time steps are used. If this is small, then it'll, it'll, use, the small, it'll, it'll use the small value instead of um, using this value that's set and then uncheck the steady state. So that's OK. And output control, we'll keep this just as the default for now, although we'll come back to it. And packages, we're, wanna, we're gonna wanna use these three transport packages. We wanna do advection and dispersion and have a source sync um, within the model. So we'll hit OK there and 
the find species, we'll put in a species here and we'll have it be the same name as we used for the um, here for the um, conceptual model and the units are already set up porosity should already be set up starting concentration we'll select this these should be set up the starting concentration should be set up when we map the um, map the the we we go to from the map to the um, to MT3D. So we'll do this here. We'll do the apply the map to MT3D files. And we see this set up. So that worked. That's the going to be the contaminant source. And we should now be ready to run. So let's give it a try. Okay, so this transient run takes quite a few time steps. You can see these are the time steps steps being executed. Quite a few time steps, but it takes 18 seconds on my computer. Hopefully on your computer it won't be too much longer than that. Okay, so close it. And the results are over here. We can see the concentrations by selecting this one. And here are the concentrations at different times. This is in units of seconds. And right now, this is really essentially the initial condition. I don't really see much change. But if we, if we go down in time, we can see things advancing see the plume advancing we can look at it and well let's look at it uh, just step through down here to about 34 and we'd see it, it's reached the, the stream at this point and then we continue on and the concentrations continue to increase so this is what it looks like in the first layer and we can go to deeper layers and this is the is layer two and three and so on. We can look at the plume in cross section. Here's the front view and layer layer 60 or um, row 60 is about through the middle of the plume. So there's a cross section through the middle of the plume you can see we have recharge coming in so the flow looks like this and the plume follows that path we have low concentrations here because the plume is going underneath the um, shallow aquifer here where the recharge is occurring and we can go all the way to the end of the time and we get a little bit of a change okay so there's the um, result. This is the plume uh, distribution within the aquifer. We also have these observation points and we can look at what the um, concentrations are in those observation points. These would be essentially monitoring wells and this is what the concentration in the monitoring wells would look like as a function of time uh, as this plume evolved. So I'm going to select all three of these observation points and you can see here that it uses this name that I gave it to help distinguish the differences between the points or to help distinguish which point is which. Okay, and so here are the results and let's see, I think it would help if we had a legend. So we'll put a legend over here and you can see the um, open square. This is monitoring well 2 and this is uh, this looks like the square is 3 and this is monitoring well 1 and so you can see that this is as a function of time and so these wells are all at zero concentration initially and then this is breakthrough at the closest monitoring well and then it's uh, 
a bit later, this many seconds. And uh, we have a, a breakthrough here at th this monitoring well and then sometime later at this monitoring well. And you can see that they uh, come up and level out at um, different concentrations depending upon their location. Okay, so another thing that would be interesting to do is develop a video of these results. So I showed you how to make a video last time and you should go ahead and give it a try for this example. Okay, so one thing that I want to do is point this out. For this simulation, it took 405 time steps and we have all of them here. Now, we may want to be uh, we may want to have access to all of these time steps, but in many cases you don't really need all of these. And so we can run a simulation that saves only part of these. And so to do that, we can go back here to uh, MT3D, and if we go to the basic transport package and the output control, if we print or save at time interval and change it from 1 to 10, then we'll save um, 1 out of every 10 uh, time steps. So that'll still give us 42 time steps. It'll still give us a, a very good um, depiction of what the evolution of this plume is like, but we won't have to deal with quite as many files. And this is really wouldn't make too much difference for this example, but if you have a large model uh, that runs for a long time, the output could get to be quite large. And in that case, it could be cumbersome and it would be a lot easier to reduce the number uh, as I've shown you. So now if we go here and take a look, we only have 41 files, uh, time periods essentially, uh, that are saved.